Hey guys, I'm here for a little tutorial video. I wanted to get a fishing video or kayak fishing video out to you guys for this week, but the tides weren't running good for this weekend or last weekend, I should say. But uh, I wanted to go out, but the tides were so low that I couldn't really get go out. And by the time the tide would start running up, it was going to be about six or seven o'clock and I couldn't really take the kayak out at that time. So I think uh, what I'm going to do uh, for you guys is just show you how I rig up some of my bait what I prefer doing and the bait I've been using lately and how I rig it up and how I use it. But um, I just want to show you. And as I said, I wanted to get a fishing video out to you guys, but it just, I couldn't get one this weekend. But this week coming up is Saturday and Sunday. I should get a pretty good video together for you guys. I'm looking forward to it. Tides are going to be running much better. It's going to be some really good content, but let's jump in here and um, I'll show you guys how I rig up some of my bait and um, what I primarily use to go fishing usually. Okay guys, I wanna show you how I usually rig up most of these. I just got a bag of uh, DOA paddle tails or shad tails I don't really use too much. Instead of using these ones up here that are my main primary colors I use. I usually like rigging these up a simple way. I go from the, um, depending on the jig head actually, usually depending on how the jig head will actually determine where you're gonna rut rig up this is a um, vimic uh, boxer head they have a pretty long shank i love these these uh, jig heads or the other ones i use let me see if i find one in here i actually just went and bought a lot more jig heads because it, i just i fly through jig heads a lot you really don't see the ones i don't think i put the bag in here after i bought them but the other ones i use are the Strike King jig heads. I think this is actually one of them. This is actually Strike King. The Strike King has a pretty long shank on it. And I like how nice and long they are. And it gives it a nice bite, uh, better uh, bite ratio. But if I can't get my hands on those. Which are kind of easy to get your hands on those. I usually go for these Vimic. These Vimic are um, really nice. Really sturdy. Really strong. But they're really easy to rig. I usually lay it on there for point of reference. And I usually wait to see where the... Um, the turnaround on the uh, shank comes out. I usually take it. I'll put it in just like so. I usually try to keep it pointed up, but I don't want to come out. Just try to scrape along the backbone. And wherever it came out this time, it came. It wants to come out like around the A. So you want to look for the A. And then about right there. And then you push it up. That's perfectly rigged. That's going to give you a good hook set. You're not going to miss any fish off of that. And they uh, they work out really good. I like these. The other way I rig up sometimes, I usually do a weedless style. I have one with barbs on it, but it's not in this box. It's in my other box. But sometimes I use these. These are uh, the split tails. These work really good. I just have this color that I don't really use at all. But this is a really good color limited edition at that time i don't think they really make this color anymore but how you rig these up usually standard you just want to go from the tip here push down and you want to see where it comes out like that you want to turn it 90 degrees and come out from the bottom like so then you push down push where it turns up and over and you got a nice tight hook there and I usually lay it right there. Put your thumb in the back like that. Slide it in the cutout that they have on the bottom. Slide it up. Get where your thumb is and then push it up. Perfectly rigged up weedless style. You can skin hook it if you want. But that's the reason why DOAs have this channel up here. So it doesn't get any uh, grass on it. So when you get a fish it just pops up. Good enough clearance for the hook. Perfectly rigged. Now, I have a couple other different jig heads. It's just depending what people like the most. I have this one with the rattle in it. I've never used it. Never have. But I'm going to wait until one day I'm on the flats to use it. It looks like a really nice one. This is actually my lightest one. The vast majority of all the sizes I run are either eighth of, eighth of an ounce or a quarter of an ounce. I don't really do any odd ball size like three sixteenths and all. I just keep it eighth or a quarter it's usually where I run 
Um, the other ones I've been running lately are these guys, but this is the um, the regular Long John, but this no, Little John actually, my bad. I meant to say Little John. But these are really good for um, trout fishing right now. So you've been really hot on that size and also the XL size. I've been catching some really decent ones on the XL size. I actually have one. I don't think I've ever rigged up or I think I did rig up. But I'll show you how to rig these. They're not as hard, but it it might look a little bit different than doing those. But vast majority of what I want, what you want to do, is you want to just find out where you want to do your hook. You lay it on top. What I do is I just measure it from there. Look where you want the bend. So you want the bend right there. Keep that. And use that as point of reference. Once you use that as point of reference, you just push that in. And then you push it out. Like so, push it up there, and that's perfectly rigged. It's not too off, it's perfectly just for that. And this is a good rig for trout right now. This is what I've been hooking up on a bunch of my trout off the bridge, and this will work on the flats and the work. It'll work a lot of places you can get a really big jig head and just bounce this on the bottom to where it's a little bit more lower in the water column and you can actually use this for flounder you can use it for a bunch of stuff don't know why i stopped using these i used to use them a lot back in the day when i was um started to fish but i just started using these and i have been really really happy with how these been performing they're scented but i really don't see the difference I got some more in my bag. These are what I usually carry in my bag usually. These are actually provokers. They're actually just an inch longer than the XLs. These are actually really good too. These will catch any trout you want. Anywhere you want to look and try to find them. They're um, they're a good bait. You can find these at a bunch of different tackle shops. My tackle shop right now has actually been getting rid of them. So I've been getting them for a pretty good sale lately. Well, my my main box, I usually have a bunch of different lures. I usually try to stay to the paddle tails, the shrimp, obviously. I, I do the shrimps in two different ways of rigging them. Let me see if I have one in here that I can show you how I usually rig them. Uh, let's use this guy. Most people actually don't know how to rig these up. I, I keep spare hooks for all these because I... I change out and do a bunch of things throughout the day. Usually, how you can tell the difference in the size of um, the DOA um, hooks is you look at the, sh the shaft length or the shaft length. So this one's going to be set up for um, half ounce. This one's going to be set up for quarter ounce shrimp. So the way that you want to rig these is actually more simpler than what most people probably would think. You want to find the first hole that comes on the body. You want to take your weight, the special uh, shrimp weight, which has these fins in there that lock in there. And you want to keep that weight as flat as you can. Don't want it to turn. And then you just want to push it in. Push it in until you feel it stop. And then once you get it stop, it's perfectly seated in there. Then you take your hook. You find your top hook hole on the top of the shrimp, push it in, and just ride it in because there's actually a channel that's built into this. Just pushes in, and then just like that, and your shrimp is perfectly rigged up, ready for, ready to go fishing with it, basically. Now, I've had experience where this gets teared up, or tore up, I should say, and what you do after that is you just take the barb out and let's say you want to do some other things you don't have scissors with me actually but what you want to do is you just want to rip the fins back here like that ripping these will actually let it ride a little bit more easier in the water column do that you take your doa uh, 3.5 inch weedless hook i think they call this 3.5 or 3.5 aught you find your back here just like that and you do the same thing what you did with the split tail 
just try to get as straight as you can even though you don't have a lot of plastic to play around with get it as straight as you can pull it down get it just like that oh. yeah it's it's kind of hard to do these because you don't have a lot of plastic to do let's see if we can do that a little bit better a little bit more neatly Just like that. Come back out from the bottom. Surprised when I do this on the fly really quick sometimes. So that's rigged up like that. You got a nice tight hook up there. Just use this as a reference point. Usually these will go in just at that second loop right there or that second broken in the body. Anything past that you're going to be hitting the weight. So just take your hook here, run it up from there, run it in the slot there, and you got your backwards rig shrimp. I've caught a lot of fish like this before too, and surprisingly it doesn't look like there's a lot of gap space there, but the body will always fold to the side like that, but this is this is really good here, and then you can take the, um, the, uh, the rattles that come with these, um, or the, you can buy the rattles for them I should say. And you just flip it in the head and these things will cast even better like this. I like them like that. I carry always one terror eye with me. You can't go wrong with these terror eyes. But there's a bunch of... Um, I carry a bunch of different stuff in here all times. I carry these jig heads just in case of emergencies. But I really don't like jig heads with this kind of spring here. And I don't really ever care for it because I can never get them rigged up perfectly like that. But that's usually how I rig most of my bait. I keep a, a bunch of different bait in here a lot of times. Usually the um, the plastics usually um, stay like this. Usually I keep all my paddle tails up there. I don't change out too many colors every um, different seasons or different fishing occasions. Usually how you see it right now is usually how the the colors get stocked the main colors i stay with all the time are this greeny color of course pearl glow in the dark sometimes gold glow rush up here uh new penny just the colors that really really work and nothing really over the top because some people they, they do over the top colors like that like electric chicken and like that they work but i just keep it simple keep everything in a nice little container you put back in your tackle box and I always keep another rack with me. I try to keep it as low as lo uh, low tackle as I can, so it's more easier for me to uh, to um, move down the causeway or where I'm fishing. When I go out on my kayak, I have a bigger box because it's usually more tackle and I can switch out. But this is all the stuff I carry just in shore. I carry always will carry a mirror lure. Sometimes I'll carry two mirror lure mirrodines. These are always good to carry. Then the uh, the 2000, the Catch 2000 Z's are really good. And Rapala X tracks for the uh, slash baits, a walk bait, a popper. Just this is all you need to successfully catch stuff in the bay. You don't need to go really too crazy. That's the reason why I always try to keep my tackle box really low. Two different types of leader line, two bins, and just an extra bag of plastics. That's all you really need. You don't need to go anything crazy. You don't need to get one of those big tackle bags that carry 20 plus lures. You don't need to do that much. You just keep it simple, guys, and keep a gag line with you. Keep something to cut stuff. Or you can cut your main line so you can retie your leader line. And that's all you really need. Maybe keep some hooks at sometimes. Like I keep, um, I always keep an extra bag of these. These are the um, DOA 3.5-aught hooks. These always come in handy. Perfect size for shrimp and shad tails and all. I used to use these, and sometimes I will use these if I know I'm going to change out bait. These are kind of not controversial about using them in fishing. Sometimes I notice the difference in fishing. Sometimes I don't. These are just dual clips. These really do work good in a pinch if I know I'm going to be changing out all day long. But vast majority of the time I'm running these shad tails. 
when I run these shad tails, I can just change out the um, the um, the barb on them or the shank and the barb with the jig heads on. I'll just change out the colors and change a different color in there if I know color is not working. Sometimes colors do do a different deal, but that's usually what I use, guys. Okay, guys. Well, I do hope you enjoyed the uh, video of a little tutorial about how I rig up some of my favorite bait I use. But I'm sorry if I didn't have a, a fishing video ready for you guys. But stay tuned for um, next week. I'm definitely going to try to get a good kayak video together this week for you guys. But I'm going to try my best. But just stay tuned. But I, uh, as I said, I hope you did enjoy this little tutorial video and found it a little bit helpful for some people out there. But until then, I'll see you guys next time on the water. Bye.